And the next next script was um, extracted from some uh, code that uh, I was using to generate uh, some reports and send them by email. So this part that we will see is how to send files content by email and it's a bit more complex example than we saw earlier. So we have a script called send files and if I run it, it will print out uh, the word usage and then some text and how I need to use. So I need to run send files, uh, send files and then uh, provide a from address, a to address, whatever you would like, a subject with uh, some subject text and then it can have files after it, Excel file, whatever files. And it will. It has a default text right now, but um, you can provide a text file that would co have the content of the of the actual message. So let's see how this um, works. Let's switch to the editor and see how it works. First of all, we have a bunch of modules we are using. Then uh, this uh, dollar te uh, text is um, the default text of the of the message, which is an HTML, uh, as you can see. And uh, this is a here document, right? So from this point till the very we, we find the end text, so this point, that's the content of the dollar text variable. That's the first thing. Um, then we are using uh, the get options functions from get opt long to receive the to parse the options that the user can provide on the command line. And we, the way we use it, where we create the hash, and then we pass a reference to this hash to the get options, and then we list the potential, the, the optional values. So we have from to cc, so we can cc to, to someone, subject and text file. All, all five of them has equal s, meaning that it is expecting a string afterwards. We earlier we used the or usage uh, idea so and we created our own usage function but in um, this case we were using the pod to usage uh, function which if we jump to the beginning of the file you can see that the pod to usage is coming from pod usage now how does this work actually you saw that here we printed out the usage but if i type in Perl doc in this it will print out basically the same information so we have both in as documentation and as usage information the same the way it works is that the pot to usage function i don't have to implement it it's already implemented when it is called it o it fetches the synopsis from the uh, documentation of the same file so i just jumped to the end of this file and where you can see that this is the synopsis and we can have other parts uh, in this documentation and the pod to usage can fetch other parts as well depending on various parameters it can get by default it just fetches the whatever it's in the synopsis so in the synopsis I just described what um, how to use this uh, script and uh, that's what printed either when you're write, uh, typing in Perl doc that's the documentation is printed or when um, the pod to usage is called the pod to usage is called then it's printed uh, again so I'm calling pod to usage in case there was some failure in the get options so someone might provide an invalid option and I'm also checking here whether the required parameters so from to and subject are there. So in this case I haven't required the CC and not the text file because we have a default text for the message for the content, neither the, the attachment. So as you can see the attachment, the files that are supposed to be attached are not provided with flags, they are just the la rest of the parameters that are provided on the command line are just expected to, to be the files to, to attach. So the second, the next part is that we check whether the text file was provided, and if it was, then we code read file function from, again, read file from the file slurp module. So we were using the read file function that would just get a file name, which is in the op text file, and read the content, put it in the dollar text. So the dollar text has a default, 
but if uh, it's not provided then the user then the but if if uh, so it is a default but if the user provides a text file parameter then the content of that file will override the text and then we just call the send files function that was um, actually used in in these other applications so it gets uh, the option hash uh, which uh, and separately it gets the subject line and separately the text and uh, the rv the, the reason it was separate is just because it used to be uh, like that in in the in this application you could actually provide uh, everything in just in the the opt hash and rv will contain the leftover from the command line options so the get opt long, the uh, the get options of the get opt long will eat, will remove all the flags that we provided and all the values that are coming with those flags, and the leftover are supposed to be the files to attach. So how does the send files look like? It will just accept the parameters, uh, the same ones that uh, were passed here with slightly different names, and here we are having a reference to a hash. So. We pass the reference to a hash, and here we are accepting is it as a scalar, and then we have to fetch the values accordingly from the, that reference to hash. We're using MimeLite uh, to send the email. The first thing we have to create a new MimeLite object. We provide the from field, the to field, the cc field if it exists, a subject line, and we tell it that it's a multi-part multi mixed message. And then we have the or die part in case the uh, the mime light doesn't work. So in, in case this has some problem, which is very unlikely. So this will return us the, the message object. And then we can attach to it parts. So the, if the message body, the text, the text that it was outside it was called text, but inside it's called message body. If the message body has uh, an HTML tag, you know, specifically this HTML tag in, then the, the attachment type is, is an HTML, otherwise it's just plain text. So you can provide as the content of the text, either HTML message or plain text message, and that, that depending, it will automatically recognize based on this, this approx approximation. And then the message body itself. So th we attach basically the way the, this email is com created is that it has some kind of a base and then has attachments and the content itself is can it can be an attachment either html or text so far we created the message with the html and then we go over all the files that need to be attached to to this message so the except of the content which is also an attachment or technically but the the, the recipient won't see that, that that's an attachment so the argv that was in the argv are passed to this uh, function and they are accepted as files, as the array files. And here we go over all these files and uh, call the attach method again. And uh, what um, we had this special case for Excel files. So if the file name x, this is a uh, ternary operator, right? So the condition is if the file name has an XLS extension, then the type of the attachment is an application XLS, otherwise it's just a plain text file. We could um, do different, uh, more complex uh, thing here. So we could have a lookup table of a hash, uh, checking the extension and based on that, providing different types here. But uh, this example didn't uh, have that because I didn't need that in, in my script. Then the name of the file uh, that should be attached. So this is the actual path to the file. And the file name parameter is what is going to be seen by the recipient. So it will just take, I'll just take the base name of this path. So this can be a path to a file. Base name will just fetch the last part of it. So the actual file name without all the paths to it, because that's irrelevant to the person who receives the email. And even the, the actual name of the file mi might not be the same, um, or you might not want it to be to be the same, but uh, this uh, simple example just assumes that it will use the same file name to display uh, for the user, for the recipient, uh, as it was originally. So that's one. 
and um, and then this position is just to, to make sure that the attachment works and that's it uh, so this way I can attach several files to the actual email and then um, use it and then here something that I've partially forgotten to add uh, to the parameter so we have to fix this so here we are checking if there is a SMTP uh, parameter but and if there is then we can we are sending the email via this SMTP server otherwise we are sending it directly through their local mail send mail system so if you're running on a Linux system or Unix system that was configured correctly then you don't need to provide an SMTP server because the local system can handle the messages but if you are running on Windows or the local system is not configured then you will need to provide the SMTP server which is just the same as your um, Outlook client might have or your e email client might have configured at your um, uh, ISP or, or that's the so that's the server the gateway that you're sending the emails through but um, funnily this option never can get at the SMTP here because we haven't accepted it so let's add it here let's add here SMTP that should also accept a string which is a an address that could be an IP number or address uh, to a computer and provide here at the bottom also SMTP and uh, hostname. So we improved it, the, the script now because now SMTP, right? Uh, that now you can user actually provide SMTP server address. So that's it about sending email and sending attachments with that email.